All right, hi guys, this is Julian. Um, uh, I'm going to talk to you guys about AP Biology question 125. Um, and to, to know about, uh, to be able to solve this question, you have to know about water potential. So I'm going to explain a little bit of that as well. So this is my question, so you can read it. Um, it was actually had the lowest percentage on the 2016 AP exam. I believe it was around 16% of people got it right. It was a grid in, so you had to be able to grid in your answer. Um, yeah, so make sure you know that for uh, Monday. Um, so here's kind of the basic idea behind water potential. My noisy bird. Um, so um, you can see here's pure water, right? And here's a membrane right here. It's semi permeable, so the water can go through it, but solute can't, right? And so if you put solute in one of these sides, the water is going to flow to this side to kind of help dilute the solute. Um, and that's because of various intermolecular forces um, between the solute particles, but we don't need to talk about right now. Um, also think about for this second one, and um, this third one, it's pretty much the same thing, you know, varying pressure, right? So if you push down on the water, it's going to flow to the other side. And so we call um, this first one with the solute in it, solute potential. And we call this one with pressure, pressure potential. OK, so the important thing to think about is where does the water want to go? Where is the water going to move? Um, so water potential, I said water potential equals solute potential plus pressure potential. So solute potential is always negative uh, as adding salt water, uh, adding salt to water draws more water into the cell. So if you had, um, this is seen in um, hypo hypotonic, uh, isotonic, and hypertonic, right? So if you have uh, a cell with this uh, greater concentration of salt in it, then outside the water is going to flow in so obviously that cell has a negative solute potential, right? And that's um, the larger that number is, or the the smaller that number is, the right. Um, the yeah. So the smaller the number is, the more the water is going to want to flow in. And so the pressure potential um, is a measure of how much pressure a membrane exerts on the inside of the cell compared with the pressure of an outside environment. So if you remember a if the cell has a cell wall, um, eventually that the, if the water is flowing into the cell, eventually that wall is going to provide enough pressure to prevent the cell from uh, expanding indefinitely. So that's kind of water potential in brief. So solute potential, uh, this is more related to the question. So the potato cube is placed in a sucrose solution uh, at various concentrations. Um, at 21 degrees Celsius. So here's kind of the formula for calculating solute potential. So um, I think this is called psi of the solute is equal to negative I C R T. I'll explain those. So I is the ionization constant. You have to think about how many uh, particles is this sucrose going to break apart into when it's placed in water. And the answer is it's going to remain in one particle um, because, it, well, think about it. So um, if you have salt, that's going to uh, separate. And so you're going to have um, a sodium ion and a chlor chlorine ion. And so that's going to be two um, ions per um, for every one mole of, right, so for every one mole of, salt that you put in, you're going to really have two moles of particles. Um, but for this sucrose, you're going to have one. So your I in this equation has to be one. Um, the C is the concentration in moles. So obviously, we talked about the more, um, yeah, so the more, more solute you have in your solution, the more the water is going to want to flow into that, right? Um, so R is the is a pressure constant, and uh, actually this this I don't know if this is given to you on the AP exam, but I'm, I know that this is given to you in the formula section, and I know that this constant is. So you just have to look it up when you 
uh, see water potential, and that's that. And then T stands for temperature, but you have to remember that it's in Kelvin, and to convert from Kelvin or from Celsius to Kelvin, you have to add 273 to the Celsius. Um, that's just the conversion. And let's see, yeah, so I is a little bit tricky, right? Uh, you see here they use the sodium example. Um, all right, so setting up the problem. Yeah, I'll just read this to you guys. The first part of the equation is pressure potential. Uh, a difference in pressure potential will result in a change in the volume of a cube. Um, so if the pressure is different inside and outside, um, then water will move one way or the other. Um, so think, think about that, right? So if, um, if the pressure, the pressure will be the same on the inside and outside of the potato cube when there's no change in the potato cube's mass. So if you look back um, at this guy here, you see that occurs right here. So that's when the molarity is 0.35. And so that's what you're going to want to use for your molarity um, when you're calculating, yeah, when you're calculating your solute potential. So here we solve the problem. We've decided that we're going to use the point here when this is zero. Um, and it's just a matter of plugging these guys in here. So it's going to be zero plus negative one times 0.35 moles per liter times this constant. And the units are here designed to cancel out. And that should make sense. Um, I should have put Kelvin on the end of this, but that's going to be 294. So you, you crank that, crank that in your calculator. Um, and then it asks you to round to one decimal place. So here's your answer. So negative 8.6 bars is the water potential.